So hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well this week we're dealing with the third of our series that is mistakes that I see people make in swimming. And this one's a pretty serious one and probably one that you all really want to get right. And we're talking about the catch in swimming. Now the catch is really important because we want to hold the water as much as we can and then drive that water backwards so that we can go forwards. But we see a lot of people not actually being able to make that catch correctly. Let's just go to the computer and have a look at a couple of examples where the catch is completely missed. The most common mistake I see people make in missing the catch is keeping a very straight arm for the first part of the pull. Now we can see with this swimmer here, his arm's straight and he's just pushing it down in that straight line. And that means that all his effort effectively is going in that direction and not where we want it, which is backwards so that he moves forwards. Even reasonably good swimmers push down and waste energy. They miss the catch. You can see with this swimmer, he's pushing down. And of course, it feels like because that movement is there and you're pushing down against the water, you feel like you're making a massive effort. But what you're effectively doing is you're wasting a lot of energy pushing the water in the wrong direction. Now, if we look at this swimmer from the side, you can see what she's doing and why she's missing the catch. So we'll just take that back. We see she's entering her arm a bit low anyway, but then the arm pushes down. Now there's no catch there, so the direction of force is that way. And what we really want to do is make sure the direction of force travels backwards, because we actually want to push ourselves forwards. So in this case, you can see the arms coming down and pushing through, and the other arm again is coming down and pushing through. She's got slightly better catch with that arm than the other, but it's still moving in a downward motion all the way down to there. So in this example, we're looking at pushing the arm down as a straight arm, instead of actually being able to grab the water and drive it backwards. Now you can see how pushing it down is actually making a massive effort because you're moving a huge amount of water with your arm. But you're actually making the effort in the wrong direction. So pushing the water down actually pushes you up, affecting your alignment in the water. We really don't want to see that. Let's go back to the computer. Another really common fault in trying to get a catch is trying to do it with the hand, as you can see with this lady here. So she's trying to actually make a catch with her hand. And you can see she's trying to pull that hand backwards. So the hand tries to make the catch and she tries to pull the hand backwards. Now, obviously, we would like as big a catch as possible. And if you do it just with the hand, you're missing the whole forearm uh, from being part of your catch. And that gives you much shorter hold on the water and is obviously leading to a less efficient stroke. And by concentrating on the hand, what tends to happen is the elbow starts to drop. Now we can see the hand here is trying to be pulled back. But at the same time, the elbow is actually dropping of the same arm. You can see if we watch the elbow, it's going to go in that direction as the hand comes in that direction as well. And you can see that elbow has dropped. And once the elbow drops, which is a hugely common problem with a lot of swimmers, you actually can't make the catch. As we see the swimmer go down, you can see that the catch is just being missed. So it's pulling back with his hand and not with his whole arm. Now that second problem is very much with people who are thinking about their swimming. So what they're thinking is, I've got my hand out there, but I must make a catch in the water. So I'll do this and I'll catch the water with my hand. You can see that is a very short lever, whereas if I do that, I've got a very large lever and clearly I want to catch the water with my forearm and my hand, not just my hand. Not only that, but if I catch the water with my hand, I tend to pull back against the water like that. And that is really making a very weak movement, whereas with what we want to do is make a strong movement like that. Another huge cause for people missing the catch is actually dropping the elbow. And here we have a swimmer that is doing exactly that. And you can see as the arm, the right arm has come in, she rotates her arm so her elbow drops. You can see that there. And then she has to push down with the elbow instead of 
being able to push back with the hand and the forearm. The other arm comes in, it's already rotated. You can see the elbow now is leading the actual arm pull. And so she misses the catch and pushes down on the water. And this is a massive cause for people swimming slower than they otherwise could. Now with this third problem, what we've got is, is a problem of alignment of the elbow. So instead of having an alignment that moves the front part of the elbow pointing down to the bottom of the pool, we have the front part of the elbow pointing up. So we're dropping the elbow. And we can see we're actually dropping the elbow and then trying to pull back. What we really need to do is rotate that elbow up so that the, the axis of the elbow runs that way as opposed to the axis of the elbow running that way. We can't bend our arm any other way than that. So we need to rotate our elbow there and then we can get a really nice catch. And we'll see that in the examples of good swimming that we're going to show you now. now here we have a swimmer who's developing an absolutely phenomenal catch as she comes in to take the turn. And we can see that what she's doing, she gets her arm in and then the forearm and hand drops and then she drives it back and with the other hand goes in. You can see she's caught the water and then it drives back again. With this arm she's dropped her elbow there a touch but she gets it into a position where she's actually holding the water and she's able now to drive backwards through the water right from very early on in her stroke. Again, with the other arm, you can see that arm moving into that catch position. And the only way she can do that is maintaining a high elbow and then dropping the forearm and the hand. You can see that again, the elbow stays, if we look at it in that position there, the elbow stays high as the arm drops. That's hugely important. So you look at the elbow there, stays high, the arm drops, get into the catch position, and then she can drive back. Next arm, we'll look at the elbow here. Stays high as she develops that catch. So now we have the perfect catch position there where we can drive back against the water with the whole of our forearm and hand. And that gives us a huge lever to actually be able to do that as she goes through, which is why this swimmer is a good swimmer and why she develops such power in the water. You want to do that if you possibly can. So we want to grab the water as far out in front of us as we possibly can. And that entails rotating that elbow up to the surface. Now you'll notice when I rotate that elbow, nothing happening happens at my shoulder. My shoulder stays exactly where it is and my elbow just rotates. When a lot of people try this, what they tend to do is they rotate the elbow. And you can see that's a completely wrong move. What we need to do is practice just rotating the elbow, but retaining the shoulder exactly where it is. We're not doing anything to the shoulder. We're just rotating the elbow up. When you can do that, you'll be able to catch the water really well. And it's well worth practicing. That very simple move with the shoulder not moving. So you rotate the elbow, the shoulder stays where it is. And if you're, you feel your shoulder go, rotating inwards, then you know you're not actually catching properly. You're actually making more effort to make the catch than you need to. And to finish off, we see another good swimmer about to make a really good catch. And you can see the elbow stays high. The arm moves into that really beautiful catch position uh, that allows this swimmer to drive back against the water. And then the swimmer drives back and you can see that real push back against the water. And that's another thing that swimmer does well, is push, extend right way to the thigh. Next arm into that catch position again. If we look at that elbow, stays high as the arm, effectively forearm and hand, drop into position and drives back. And again, we get a high elbow, the forearm and the hand drop, even when he's breathing, and that allows him to drive back against the water the whole length of his stroke. And that's what you need to do to make yourself a fast swimmer. Now, when we see someone dropping that elbow, it's often because they're using the wrong muscles to actually swim front crawl.
When you're trying to develop the catch and then pull back, you want to be using the deltoid muscles at the top of the shoulder and the bicep. Yeah, just there. You can see my bicep suddenly working and my deltoid is working too. What we see with people who drop the elbow is they start using the tricep down there. And that makes you pull back the elbow. When you pull back the elbow, you clearly can't get that catch. Now I'm going to just put a link up here to a video that explains how front crawl should feel. And if you don't know how it should feel, have a look at that video and hopefully that'll help you. Okay, that's it. The third in our series of five problems that I see in swimming. Mistakes that swimmers make on a regular basis. Hopefully you found that useful. See you soon. Keep well, enjoy your swimming.